ஹலோ யங் டாக்டர்ஸ் வெல்கம் டு மெடிகோஸ் மலூஸ் நெக்ஸ்ட் டாபிக் அண்ட் த நெக்ஸ்ட் டாபிக் வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு டிஸ்கஸ் அபவுட் த ப்ரீச் ப்ரெசன்டேஷன் அபவுட் த ப்ரீச் ப்ரெசன்டேஷன் ஜஸ்ட் அண்ட் இன்ட்ரோ ஆஸ் அண்ட் இன்ட்ரோ ஐ வுட் லைக் டு சே தட் திஸ் ப்ரீச் இஸ் அ நாட் தட் மச் காமன் பட் அ காமன் டாபிக் தட் இஸ் சீன் இன் வை வாஸ் தட் இஸ் பீன் ஆஸ் இன் வை வாஸ் அண்ட் தட் ஆல்சோ Uh, seen in many labor rooms in practice also so regarding breach delivery it is a complicated one comparing to the normal vaginal delivery it need a trained assisted breach delivery person uh, so that even many many complications can occur that so even that complications can be tackled at that situation and also regarding this vivas and theories also the entire um, mechanisms and task steps regarding the come regarding this breach is different from that of the ke- normal cephalic presentation so it is easier if you are doing a cesarean section but it is not ethical just going straight away for the cesarean section without an attempt without a trial of this vaginal delivery give there is a chance of doing it so the knowledge is essential if the physician is well trained enough with the assisted breech delivery then that won't be a nightmare so coming to the topic breech presentation is an abnormal lie of the fetus in the uterine ovoid that is instead of a normal cephalic presentation that is the head coming down head being down head coming first out of the vagina instead of that the buttocks or the legs of the fetus are presenting first so that is the breech presentation so regarding the position that is th- regarding the lie of the baby in the uterine void we are able to classify it into four positions that is there is a left sacro anterior that is lsa which is the most common position so here we have to note that the sacrum is being chosen as the denominator okay to uh, convey to tell about the position we have chosen this point sacrum as the denominator so what about in a uh, normal cephalic presentation there we are chose we have chosen occiput as the denominator so let me go to let me um, clear it about uh, cephalic presentation that is in ke- here the figure shows about uh, shows cephalic presentation here here this this is the occiput area this is the maternal pelvis and this is the sacro uh, maternal sacral part and this is the maternal pubic symphysis part here you can see that this um, we can divide this maternal pelvis into four quadrants with by ap di- uh, diameter and by transverse diameter so by that here comes this is the left side and this is the posterior part of the left side this is the anterior quadrant of the left side similarly in the right side also anterior quadrant and this is the posterior quadrant and in this here the occiput is lying in the left side and more specifically in the anterior quadrant so this is the left occipito anterior position this is the left occipito anterior position here so it lies in, in in this axis which is this axis this is the right oblique axis so what about the left occipital posterior position see here the, the occiput is lying in the posterior quadrant of the left side and this is the left occipital posterior position where this head is lying in the which oblique line in this left oblique line okay so this is about this cephalic presentation so what about this breech presentation in breech presentation see i have drawn a figure we have to concentrate on this diagrams in order to understand it more easily so this part is i have drawn as the buttocks see the lowermost crook section i have taken drawn is like this and just above we have in the assume a cross section also okay a cut section this is the um, shoulder this is the shoulder i have drawn and this yellow shaded thing is the head which is at the top okay so first comes the sacrum this is the buttocks then above that this uh, shoulder then at the top the head comes this is what 
uh, we see if, if we are looking from the mother's head point of view okay from above view and here the sacrum this point of the buttocks that the sacrum is lying in which quadrant towards this left anterior quadrant okay so there we are seeing left sacro anterior position see sacrum is towards this anterior quadrant in the left side so this is the left sacro anterior position so what about this other one that is left left sacro posterior position here look sacrum is in the posterior part so this is the left sacro posterior position okay and coming back i think you have understood that coming back so what are the positions once again this is the left sacro posterior position is there right sacro anterior and also right sacro posterior position is, is there and the most common being left sacro anterior okay i hope it's clear to you next we have to look the types of breach what are the types of breach we have classified the breach into mainly uh, four types uh, i've got i've ref i'm referring it from dr sheila b's obstetrics textbook there it is it has been given as four main types but just remember just at least two that is mainly complete breach or flexed breach then the second one incomplete breach and uh, the third and fourth are complicated and uncomplicated breach let me get uh, into the topic in more depth into the topic that is complete breach or flexed breach means the child is at the universal flexion that is look at this this is the complete complete breach the child is at universal flexion that is the flexion at the thigh region and that is hip region and also flexion at this knee region and the whole upper limb is also at flexion this is the complete breach and next is income about incomplete breach there is here this is the incomplete breach and uh, here you can see it is not at properly flexed position one more is there that is frank breach that we can see later so about complete breach or flex breach we have seen that it is at the universal flexion and it is more common in multi para in multi para it is more common you have seen that the breach is broad and bulky see the breach is broad and bulky and also the presenting part that is if we are doing a per vaginal examination what we can get is we can feel the buttocks and also we can see we can feel the legs if there is a possibility of legs also getting into the as a presenting part so uh, and we have uh, that is the broad and bulky breach and the mobile breach that is engage as, as it is a bulky and, and broad the engagement would be a difficult part that is the progression of labor is also a little bit difficult so there is high risk of being it a mobile breach and the fetal heart sound can be heard above the umbilicus why because of late engagement okay and there is high risk of complications such as cord prolapse so from this we get a way an idea that complete breach or flex breach is not that much easier or favorable for a vaginal delivery so next uh, we are looking at incomplete breach in incomplete breach main one is main subheading is the extended or frank breach that is the most common one see i have this is the frank breach or extended breach which is a part of this incomplete breach okay which is a subtype of this incomplete breach so regarding this frank breach from this figure what can be seen what is um, seen is that there is flexion at this hip and extension at the knee joint see extension of the knee joint so from our common sense what is that it it looks like a more compact one see a more compact one so and also this presenting part is buttocks only huh? the, there is no chance of legs legs coming to the vagina the, to the downward part with a buttocks the, the presenting part is buttocks only so it looks like a much favorable one and here I have told you that the flexion is at the thighs and extension at knees. It is more common in nulli para. Huh? Okay. 
yeah there is it's a compact bridge and hence the engagement is easier only buttocks are, are felt at per vaginal examination and here we go that is it is best for vaginal delivery okay clear next is uh, some other presentations in the incomplete breach there is foot link presentation and knee presentation see it, this can present as a foot link presentation if it is coming this part is this leg foot is coming down and if the knee is coming here uh, then it be become a knee presentation which is any type of incomplete position okay next is about complicated and uncomplicated breach simple that is if there is any complicate maternal or fetal complication associated with the breach then it is complicated breach and if there is no other complications of mother or fetus then it is an uncomplicated breach so as a whole the best one is best one for vaginal deliveries extender of frank breach if it is a complicated breach or if it is a footling presentation better or best go for cesarean section okay okay that's all then why it is happening why there is breach that is what is the etiology yeah the main the most common cause is prematurity prematurity is the most common cause why because in many of the cases during the end of this second trimester only the child rotates downwards coming to the normal vertex cephalic presentation okay so if there is prematurity huh this rotation is delayed or there is less time for rotation that is uh, the rotation rotation hasn't happened yet but before that rotation the labor has started also so that is prematurity and hence it is it becomes the most common cause for this breach okay that is the rotation uh, hasn't yet happened next maternal factors are there what are the maternal factors yeah here we go multi parity how multi parity during each delivery the abdominal muscles are being stretched the uterine muscle walls have been, are being stretched and after that after the delivery these get relaxed also their laxity is increased huh? so due to that the contour of the maternal abdominal muscles and the uterine walls have been lost so the shape is maintained uh, is lost and it also affects this child's position and that's one cause then uterine obliquity yes that is the uh, laxes the axis of the uterus if it is abnormal then also the lie that is the position of the child is also affected then placenta previa and conovundal attached placenta that is placenta previa means the placenta is a low lying one it is situated in an abnormal position much closer to the internal os okay to close to the cervix so what happens is that the rotation is affected huh that is the child's head uh, has less um, space to accommodate in, in the lowest segment lowest part so the rotation and the position is also altered and in case of cono fundal attached placenta also the placenta is attached at the higher position cono and fundal there also this <coughs> child gets um, less space and also the alignment is altered so next is uterine fibroid at lower segment yeah same thing if there is a fibroid like mass in the lower segment then the same happens then if there are any uterine anomalies that is any case of any mullerian anomalies like by coronate uterus or septate uterus also <coughs> these breech positions mal positions and mal presentations can happen can occur next are fetal factors what are the fetal factors multiple pregnancy here we go multiple pregnancy what is that in case of a twin pregnancy even if the first baby is at vertex presentation the there are high chance of high possibility of the second baby being at a breech position huh okay next is a congenital anomaly that is in congenital anomaly the child's pro, uh, maturity is affected uh, this development is affected so by that the even the as part of this development and maturity process the rotation is also affected the alignment of the child is also affected 
everything is delayed there next is polyhydramnios that is the fluid the liquor in the maternal uterus is larger is much higher so what happens is that it's uh, the child will float in that water and it can take any position okay it can float in a huge bag of waters okay so it floats and can get into this breech position then oligohydramnios just opposite to the polyhydramnios that is lesser uh, inadequate amount of the lycra what happens is that in that the child gets trapped okay in this dry thing sac the child gets trapped it cannot rotate itself and attain a normal vertex position so there is that happens that happens in oligohydramnios then it is iud intrauterine fetal demise that is child is the baby's the fetus is dead inside the uterus so it is dead means dead no development no maturity no rotation no alignment occurs realignment occurs and also extended legs in case of extended legs also the position is altered the position the child cannot attain the correct right position okay that's about etiology next we have to see how we diagnose it okay it's very simple quite simple simply by an abno abdominal examination we can diagnose it in abdominal examination there are some few grips we will be palpating so first one is the fundal grip second being the umbilical grip third being the pelvic grip and the finally the second pelvic grip so in case of the fundal grip what happens is that in a normal case in fundal grip we will be able to feel and palpate the buttocks of the soft mass like thing which is the buttocks of the baby just below the cephis term that is a fundal grip but here what happens the head we are feeling it the head of the fetus is coming at the fundal grip in case of first pelvic grip usually we get a hard compact bellotable mass that is usually the head but here what is that here it comes a non bellotable soft broad mass that is the breech that is the buttocks and also in a usual case in a vertex presentation the head is lying towards the pelvis so the ch child the baby's chest the heart is uh, lying more downwards so usually in usual cases in vertex presentation the heart is lying below the level of umbilicus so the fetal like uh, heart sound is usually heard below the umbilicus but here what happens is just opposite the heart is above the umbilicus the fetal heart sound is heard above the umbilicus this is enough these findings are enough for confirming a normal breech presentation but for further confirmation we have to go more forward in vaginal examination i have told you there can be a buttocks we can feel with or without legs depending on whether it is extended position or if it is a flexed position and uh, there can be conical bag of membranes coming down seen downwards and the gold standard diagnosis diagnostic confirmation is by usg ultrasonography and there is another term that is if the child is looking upwards as if it is looking at the stars that is if the child has attained a hyper extension of its head then it is seen as a star gazing sign or star gazing fetus in the usg that is as if the child is looking up at the stars that is star gazing so this hyper extension of head makes it quite difficult for a vaginal delivery so it is an indication for the cesarean section okay next is some problems can occur there are many problems but some problems that we are facing in breech delivery is that in case of if we are only if we are going for a vaginal delivery in breech problems can be due to ill fitting of presenting part there can be premature rupture of membrane and following it a cord prolapse also there is high chance of that then there are then we have to say that in usually usual case in inverter's presentation the child's head is coming first there's a science behind it there is a co uh, reason behind why the head is why the god made it so why the god wants the child's head to come first it's being that the child's head is the biggest that is the baby's the fetus head is the biggest part of the fetus so and it, it is also very hard so by coming first it 
stretches the cervix it dilates the cervix to its most eh, to its high ex to a high extent so that once the baby's head is out the trunk the legs limbs everything comes out easily because the head was already dilated the cervix why it opened the cervix to its max okay but here in breech delivery the buttocks is coming or if the legs are coming then the dilatation that is the wide opening of the cervix is not taking place because the buttocks or the legs are the smallest parts of the child's body so if that smallest part is coming out first then the cervix feel that ah oh, there is no need of the much dilatation only these parts are coming out now so i may simply relax uh, simply sit quiet so there is poor dilatation of the cervix and the smaller part comes first so after the smaller parts even uh, even after the delivery of the trunk there is the biggest part being that is the head inside the uh, maternal body so it is waiting for the cervix to open wide open okay so the head there is high risk of head being stuck inside the mother's body there is high risk of asphyxia so there is no and also there is no time for the head to mount there is asphyxia the child has to get out somehow as soon as possible so there is less time for the head to mount in molding means that is head will uh, the suture lines will overlap in the child's skull and it will get into a shape so that a uh, small compact shape so that it can come out easily that usually happens in a normal vertex presentation only here it that even that is not possible okay so these are the problems next is mechanism of labor yeah that's interesting so about the mechanism of labor first of all we have to look then to, into the normal mechanism of labor normal steps of this labor the normal word in normal vertex presentation